Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming. Welcome to Last Epoch. With the game finally releasing with 1.0, you might be like us and pretty brand new to the game. I've been doing a lot of reading and watching and researching the build-up to launch though to help me be prepared and then ideally be able to make content suited for other new players with information that's not overly dense or hard to understand. Hopefully, I'm going to be making videos that you need to hear at the right time. And on that note, you might have heard about this game's crafting system and how impactful and important it actually is. And by engaging with the crafting as soon as you can, you actually end up with a lot stronger character during the leveling so you're able to blast very quickly. My goal of this video is to encourage you to get crafting pretty much as soon as possible with confidence. So we're going to jump into game and explain everything. Anywhere you are in the world, you can just press F and that brings up the forge here. To do any crafting or whatever, you take an item and put it in here and then we can start, you know, working on things. As a neat little trick for you, let me take my weapon and put it in here. Then we just close the menu. You can see that I am unarmed. It's not in my inventory. It's it's not on my equipment and that's because it's sat in the forge. This is technically an extra inventory slot so if your inventory is full but you want to take one more item you can sneak something big into the forge and save some space. So that aside I am currently playing a hammer paladin build so I'm obviously really relying on it during leveling. You can see the scaling tags for this ability physical throwing attack strength and dex. So I want physical throwing attack strength and dex as much as I can get on everything I'm using. Now naturally because I'm playing a class that needs that kind of thing there are passives that I'm picking up that are actually giving me that. So I'm getting levels in Juggernaut here, a passive, and that's giving me extra strength. But on my gear, that's what I'm really looking for. Every piece is going to want to have damage increasing picks if I can get it. So instead of just strength, I'm looking for physical and throwing attack. So I'm going to be looking for those on my gear from drops, but also whenever I find a vendor in the first hub, you can find one. This is the second hub. We can find items that come with different stuff on them. We might buy them based on anything relevant to our build. For example, there's a belt here that has cooldown recovery speed, which is nice and throwing damage. It only cost eight gold for me to buy this and I have 3,500 when I'm literally level 13 super early game. So there's no reason not to be buying items that are relevant to your build. So that's what I wanna impart to you to begin with. Now you've got an idea of how to get a base set of things that are relevant to you. How can we improve them? Well, that's where crafting comes in. As usual, there's a different quality to your items. This is a blue, that's a yellow, that's kind of an orange. And as you can see, they have different amounts of stats or affixes on them. We can check this really easily by taking this jade amulet that's got, you know, common quality. It can only have two. This blue, it can have three. Yellows, they can have four. And yeah, we have this kind of unique that has five. To take a piece of gear then and actually put something on it, you just click one of these and choose. But this is based off of what affix shards you currently have. So to put fire resistance on something, you're going to need to have some fire resistance affix shards. One of the most valuable affixes you can have is health in general. And as you can see, I have no shards for health, so I can't put an affix for health on a piece of gear. So how do you get these shards to actually do this kind of crafting? Well, they're going to drop constantly in play. When you're killing enemies, elites, bosses, whatever, they just drop and they start to drop pretty often once you get past chapter one. You can even find shrines and chests that are going to dump them out on you. You'll actually start to find them randomly pretty well. But obviously, if you're hunting something specific, you're going to need to do some specific crafting stuff. So instead of relying on RNG, I'm going to take this copper chalice here that has what I need on it. It has increased physical damage and it also has just health. So let's open the forge, put it in there, and we're going to use a rune of shattering. The whole point of a rune of shattering is to essentially dismantle it. It's going to rip out the value of everything that's in there and give me the shards. So let's shatter that and get the materials. As you can see, we got the resistance shard, damage over time, physical damage. So now that I've got, say, physical damage shards to work with, I can type in physical and I can actually put one on here. The thing is, this already has physical damage on it at tier three. So if I hover over that, we can see 22% increased physical damage at tier three, whereas on my belt, just a tier one, well, that's 11% in this case. So the higher the tier, the more value, the bigger the number. So by actually clicking on this, I'll put in that affix shard, the physical damage increase, and raise the tier of that. This will take it from 11% and raise it, but it will also cost some forging potential you can see at the top. That is basically the limit of how much you can manipulate one item. It prevents 
prevents you from turning one item into a crazy one by like forging on it six bajillion times. Different items have different forging potential. This chest has 25. The belt I'm messing with is starting with 20. There are things you can do to reduce the forging potential use, like there's the Glyph of Hope. This gives us a 25% chance to not actually use any of the potential, but I won't do that right now. But just to show it, let's press upgrade affix. We'll go from 11% to tier two. We only used one forging potential instead of one to 12, which is quite lucky. And now it's giving me 20% increased physical damage, just shy double what we had a moment ago. By having different items that have that in this specific build, that is huge. Maybe you're using spells and you'd be wanting spell damage instead. So while you're leveling, actually having these stats and upgrading them, oh my god is it impactful. So it is strongly worth it to use your shards to do upgrading even during leveling. As you saw, if you were to say, take an item and really improve it, and then when you're done with it, you can just shatter it and get the value back. Though I will explain some details around that. So you're finding shards in gameplay, you're using runes to shatter certain pieces of gear for relevant stats that you need. That would suggest that runes of shattering is very valuable, and they are, but you can get tons of them. You can get like three or four of them from every NPC you visit. They sell them for a purchase price of 2,000 gold, which you can see I've got 3,500 very early. That's half of what I've got. Very quickly, you're going to be getting money, gold, lots to work with. And so buying these runes of shattering is very worth it. Whenever you find runes, shards, glyphs, you can just press this button here, transfer crafting items, and it'll go into this infinite forge storage so you don't have to carry them around. The idea then is to be purchasing these runes of shattering whenever available from traders when you have the spare money. Assuming it won't bankrupt you, it's worth buying because you definitely want to be increasing your power using these things. So while you're leveling, you're going to want to be saving relevant items to you like I've been doing. I'm looking for items that increase my physical damage so that I I can upgrade the ones that I've got on my gear. And here's another one that I could use right there. So while you're leveling, maybe on the way to 15 and going through Act 1 and 2, you'll be saving items that have relevant stats on. Once you start having some runes of shattering, then you'll break these apart and upgrade the gear that you have, like I showed. But universally, everyone's going to want extra health. Percent health and hybrid health are actually the most valuable forms of this. Other than that, you definitely want to be leveling up your movement speed. Movement speed while leveling is huge. You fly through the areas, you progress, you clean up the area, you move to the next mob pack. You know, basically the more movement speed you have, the faster you get through the campaign. You find movement speed on boots and rings to begin with. Silver rings in particular like these have increased movement speed on them. So 30% increased movement speed from those three items. And that's allowing me to blast through the areas. It's really nice. Upgrading your movement speed on your boots then is definitely worth it. So if you find any movement speed on boots or rings, definitely save those and then break them down and use to upgrade your movement speed when you can. The last thing I need to mention when you're talking about forging and crafting in general are the glyphs and the runes. Runes will start dropping in act two kind of randomly, just like glyphs. I've not actually bought any glyphs. I've just found these ones, but I need to explain some details, starting with some specific runes. Let's start with the rune of shattering. It destroys destroys an item, creating a random number of affix shards containing its powers. So let's take that warrior's chalice again. We have tier three physical damage. If I were to use the rune of shattering on it, I might not get the full value of the tier three. I'll get minimum tier one value. I might get a tier two, I might get tier three. So there is some RNG in Rune of Shattering and that's why runes of removal can also be very helpful. These let you remove a random affix on an item, but it will fully return the number of shards equal to its tier. So let's say you have a affix that you really like, you wanna keep the full value, let's say it's tier six or something. Using a rune of removal can let you kind of snipe off affixes getting the full value until you get the one you want. Just be aware that using a rune of removal does use some forge potential so you can't infinitely try but it's usually likely to work and be well worth the effort outside of that there are a few other runes to consider but as this is a beginner's guide i'm keeping this simple but on the other hand during crafting you might modify the craft with a glyph like say a glyph of hope like i said without the glyph i'm going to cost 1 to 14 forging potential of my total 27 on this item with the glyph of hope i might at a 25 percent chance not use any forging potential. That's very useful, especially if you're gonna be using an item for a while and you wanna modify it a good amount. There are a lot of useful, impactful glyphs to consider, but for this beginner and leveling guide, I'm only gonna say that glyphs of despair, in short, are valuable for end game crafting. So you wanna take those and save them don't waste them early game. 
But yeah, in conclusion for this beginner's guide for crafting, craft and craft a lot earlier than you might expect. Find out what the main damage scaling stats for your build is, then collect and save them up whenever you find them on a piece of gear. Ideally, you'll be wearing items with those things on them, right? But then once you've got some money to buy shattering runes or you find some, you can get starting with crafting even as early as like level 10 to 15. Using affix shards you find or that you shatter off of specific gear, you can upgrade your main damage affixes, your movement speed affixes, and also slot on and upgrade some health and hybrid health whenever possible. Runes of shattering and removal are going to be the best way to do that on top of the random shard drops you find and then use. I hope overall this has been simple and understandable but for now I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye